I will uh, this time first thank those people that are contributing to the development of agriculture sector. Uh, I sometimes as well be on YouTube, then I watch many people trying to show us people what they are doing. And you know, that sign is a sign of growth or development. It has not been existing for quite some time, uh, or it has not been fully existing in our country. Every person has been reserving information, reserving his ability over farming. That's why the speed of farming has not been so good. But when I look around, YouTube channel, put in God farming, put in farming in Uganda, we are really inspiring many, many people. And we are preaching what we do. Not like those other cases where we used to preach what we don't do. But as for now, we are preaching what we are doing. Me, I will not get tired of just updating you about the core three points or three pillars of a successful animal farmer. One, we talked about genetics, nutrition, and uh, management. So in your information where we are, it's, this is nutrition. I always talk about genetics. I always talk about um, 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 management. Um, first and foremost, today I want to just to explain to you a very simple or to emphasize more stronger point over the nutrition. I have said this many times that when you have alfalfa, it is one month ready to be um, harvested. We harvested this one month ago and even today we are going to, uh, to harvest. This goes to the zero grazers. Uh, this goes for uh, semi-intensive farmers. Semi-intensive, I mean, uh, if you have your animals and uh, you let them go, feed uh, or browse all over the field, then come back and you supplement on them. That would be our best approach because we are still lucky that we have chance of the land, uh, but as well, we don't have plenty of land. So we still have... Um, um, just a moderate land. So like for a people who doesn't have land, but they want to do farming, let's say you have one acre or 100 by, uh, by 50, uh, your take is supposed to be this. For your information, many people will again uh, comment over this. And I've said this many times, that alfalfa is a goal that we really need to uh, emphasize on. I'm not saying that it's the only grass that can give us all what we want, no. But it should be in our mind that when you have this, at least you have a lot. Remember, uh, the meat or animal protein always comes from the uh, plant protein. So I'm emphasizing those grasses that have a lot of protein in it. So for a people who have, let's say 50 by 100, a space of 50 by 100, do you know you can have even up to 400 goats? But where do you get the pastures? So for your information, this alfalfa, the advantage it has, it's very nutritious grass. But it does not give a very big outcome. But at least gives you a moderate. Like in an acre which is really grown up very well, it can give you maybe around uh, 200 bells. Or 150 to 300 bells maximum and of which other grasses can even give you up to 400 bells but the nutritional value of this the protein content is really very very good and it's very rich so what am I trying to say is that by the time an animal should have eaten let's say a half kilo of dry matter when it feeds on this it will feed on half kilo if an animal was taking, let's say, a kilo of a dry matter, it is going to take a half kilo of this, and, then it, and it is highly utilized. I want just to remind you um, something in the makeup, in the makeup of the muscles, in the makeup of the muscles, we really need a lot of protein, and uh, we read also carbohydrates. But remember, even the body, to convert uh, the minerals in the body, it needs energy. That means we also need a lot of carbohydrate. Carbohydrate is a core of nutrition. Then 
protein is a core of adding on mass. You get it? And also vitamins also increases on the metabolism of the body. So what am I trying to emphasize is that whoever is there, whoever is viewing me, think about nutrition as a key point. Before you even put up, let's say, a structure of animals, have your pastures first. You rather have more grasses and have less animals than having more animals and less pastures. So what I wanted just to, to, to remind you is every month I have to harvest alfalfa. And what I've decided to do, I've decided to put, uh, this is a new garden, uh, I have decided to put on extra seven acres for alfalfa. And you people, me, I'm going to keep harvesting more. I would rather have more grass than even more uh, animals. So if you have more grass, that means you have the raw material to convert. In your information, this is a process of converting grass into muscles. When you have the muscles, that means you have the dollars. All what we want, the end point is dollars, but how do you get it? So concentrate, have your basics on tips. One, I should talk about of grasses, then talk about of the genetics, then talk about of the management, because management is, is you. You are the management. The more you handle it better, the better for you. You get it? So this is alfalfa. I'm telling you, I'm not saying that all other grasses are not good. But when we look at our motive of making up of the muscle, we are concentrating more on the protein. You get it? So we only have to look at the grass that has a lot of protein. And that is a positive for us. You get it? That's why I'm emphasizing more of this. And I'm sure you people, you can produce these grasses. Because I know many things that you're doing. Uh, that even requires a lot of your time it requires a lot of your money but you're getting less money let's produce this if it needs to export these grasses we can export there is no anywhere you go wrong with this as long as you put it in a dry matter state so uh, also my um, sugar grace uh, uh, I want also to talk about this about the sugar grace uh, the garden for sugar grace is also there I think you can see it in the background but what I'm trying to explain to you is that when you have sugar grains, many of you people are feeding your animals on the spent grain. In our language here, they call it chikanja. Chikanja, they take sorghum and um, uh, maybe maize. After removing what they want and they make beers, the leftover is given to the animals. So if it is given to the animals, that means it's less nutritious. But when you plant sorghum, most of the sugar grass that has a large volume of uh, carbohydrates, a large volume of, of, of sugars, it is going to really help you in the energy. You know, excess um, carbohydrates in the body are the ones that are turned into fat. So what am I trying to say is that when you have sugar grass or when you have sorghum, sorghum is, um, is all because it has the carbohydrates, I've told you that many times. It has the protein itself, because in the grain, it is a protein. It has um, a dry matter. So I'm not saying that that is the only grasses that you should concentrate on. Chloris Ghana is there. Brachelia molato is there. But when you look at things that really help you financially, I want you to uh, invest less but get more money. When you plant sugar grass, you are supposed to be harvesting every after two months. And that very grass regrows. You get it? It's the same thing like this. But when you do maize, it's good. You know, it has also protein, but not that much as the, 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 the sugar grass. And then it also has carbohydrates, which is also very high. But you really need to plant, then wait for a month, and again go back and plant. But for this case, you just keep cutting all route. So my advice, you guys, I would like you to take it very, very well. I would like to take it very, very well. Concentrate and do pastures. It is a deal. It is everything. It is the initial that you need to have for family. I think, uh, let me just wish you the best as per now. Take my word as a serious word. <laughs>